the primary evolution for the genus Homo of the past two million years has been largely in the brain that in the fossil record has seen the hominid cranial capacity expand from what was little different in size to that of a chimpanzee some 2.5 million years ago to now triple the size as natural selection selected those humans who were able to utilize a constant flow of new ideas whilst those individuals and populations who just could not make the leap in understanding were literally killed off by superior strategies or climate change. As one can imagine, the leaps in cognition were a mixture of steady progress coupled with great leaps in insight, such as using fire for first warmth and then for protection and eventually realizing that cooked meat, i.e. food, is far more easily edible and digestible that greatly boosted our calorific intake, giving fuel for the brain to grow. And so, by as long ago as one million years, much of the earth was populated with humans, the species Homo erectus, that would exist for some two million years, with pockets of Homo erectus living as recently as 140,000 years ago and giving rise to many new species of humans apart from us, the most known of which is Neanderthal man, who would rule over Europe for, so, for a good 400,000 years. Despite most today still deferring human origins to a creation myth, as this offers the promise of eternal life after death, in which respect the creation of man based on biblical story of Adam and Eve, as created by God in his own image in the Garden of Eden of some 6,000 years ago, does not quite match the fossil and genetic record that primarily evidences a process of evolution by means of natural selection of over 6 million years as our distant ancestor diverged from the great apes, spending 4 to 5 million years as the Australopithecines hominids, which were little different to chimpanzees, before evolving into the Homo erectus, emerging some two million years ago, that gave rise to many subsequent hominids of the Homo genus, including eventually the dark-skinned African Homo sapiens sapiens, which emerged with a small population of probably less than 10,000 by 220,000 years ago in the Rift Valley of East Africa as indicated by mitochondrial DNA which is passed down through mothers without recombination, differing only due to mutations as the subspecies that all modern human genes can be traced back to. Following which Homo sapiens for the next 150,000 years or so attempted many migrations across sub-Saharan Africa that proved successful by between 140 and 110,000 years ago whilst the migration attempts to leave sub-Saharan Africa only proved successful by a small population dating back to approximately 75,000 years ago which again is confirmed by the DNA of all humans outside of Africa sharing the same mitochondrial DNA that dates back to this period, the importance of which being that humans evolved from a single region of East Africa and not multi-regionally from Homo erectus, archaic humans that had spread throughout the world long before Homo sapiens emerged, as many Chinese anthropologists still tend to promote as the origins for Chinese people to this very day despite DNA evidence to the contrary. As Homo sapiens hunter-gatherers slowly spread over tens of thousands of years to replace the earlier successful migrations of hominid species populations, both through competition and highly probably having been hunted and eaten as high calorie foods, i.e. the fate of Homo erectus, that it self-evolved from an earlier Homo habilis that it also coexisted with for some time, giving rise to many hominids during its relatively long timeline 
of near 2 million years, such as Neanderthals and Heidelbergenses, from about 700,000 years ago to just 50,000 years, from which Homo sapiens, archaic humans, evolved, and many others as isolated populations of Homo erectus throughout Africa, Europe, and Asia continue to evolve in response to differing environmental influences. However, effectively by 20,000 years ago, or more than four times the length of recorded human history, environmental changes coupled with the arrival of modern man had by then outcompeted into extinction all other archaic human species such as Cro-Magnon man and Homo sapiens Idaltu, and of course Neanderthals which however still continue to live on in part as the genes of all humans outside of Africa have between 1 to 4 percent of their genes from Neanderthals which means that when Homo sapiens met Neanderthals they tended to successfully mate together and thus Neanderthals disappeared both due to competition from the more successful Homo sapiens and due to the weight of Homo sapien numbers that diluted the Neanderthal populations into extinction. The next episode in this series explains what changed 75,000 years ago that allowed the physically relatively weak Homo sapiens to conquer the world and make all other human species extinct. This video series is based on the following two articles published at the Market Oracle website. Ensure you are subscribed for future updates in this series and click the link to the next episode. Yeah.